Okay, next one is Q, which is uh, as popular as a step. Okay, and we have you are already familiar with this concept, concept of Q. Okay, so at a coffee house, we stand in a line, and uh, that line is actually a kind of Q. Okay, so we use this Q concept everywhere in our general life. Okay, so let's talk about the queue as an abstract data type and then we will see some examples and we will see the implementation of queue. Okay. okay, the next uh, data structure is queue, which is, which is very similar to stack, but slightly different. So basically uh, in the definition and uh, in the specifications and implementations, it is really similar to stack. Okay, let's see. Uh, Q is an ordered list in which all insertions take place at one end and all deletions take place at the opposite end. So do you remember what the stack was? How, how uh, the stack was defined? So in the stack, if the stack is an ordered list, right? So in which all insertions and deletions take place at the same site, okay? But in the queue, the insertion takes at one side and the deletion takes place at the other side, okay? So given a queue, a naught is the front element and a sub n minus one is the rear element. So front side and uh, back side. So basically it is a FIFO, which, which is short for the first in, first out. It's like a coffee house, right? And uh, as you can see in this figure, you know, uh, insertion uh, occurs on the right side and the deletion occurs on the other side, okay? So we call it front and the rear, that is Q. So it is really similar to stack in a sense, but it has two sides. So in our real life, we use Q a lot. So think about this key buffer. So when you type something with your keyboard, then it goes into the system and it prints out the characters in the monitor. Then if you type A first, then it will appear in the monitor first. Okay, and then if you type B right next to A, then it will show up right after A in, the, in your monitor. So it's Q. It doesn't change the order at all. It's not something like a stack, okay? And also, uh, we can think uh, we can think about the waiting line in the cafeteria or ticket office in everywhere, you know, bus stop everywhere. So first comes, first served, first in, first out. That's basically Q. Okay, next, uh, computer systems, the process scheduling Q. I mean. You know, if you run your code, okay, if you execute some program, and if you execute another program, then the first comes, you know, the first, the first comes, first served, okay. Message queue is exactly the same as key buffer. If you type something, then it should show up first. It should deliver to the other side first. That's queue, so simple, right? Okay, so uh, we have a specific example here to, to understand how Q is working. So if we insert A, B, C, D in that order, then A is the first element we can delete from the Q. Okay, so this figure is similar to, to the stack, right? But it's different because we have a two sides. You know, in the stack, we had just the top side and that side, the top side is open and the other side is, is closed. But in the queue, we have rear and front. And whenever we add, whenever we insert something to this queue, then we put that through this rear side. So we put A and we put B and then C and then D. Okay, so, so far it's exactly the same as a stack because we just push it, the element. And now when we delete, something is different. When we delete 
one element from this queue, we delete from the front, not from the rear. So that's the difference compared to the stack. Okay. Other than that, it's quite similar. Okay, let's define uh, Q as an abstract data type. So first, so we need a data, which is a finite ordered list with zero or more elements. Okay, so far, it's the same as stack, okay? And operations, we need a create operation and add operation, delete operation, and is full and is empty. Okay, so basically we have the kind of the same number of operations as a stack. So first one, create. Obviously, we should create we should be able to create, which means we need, you know, when we implement these things, then we need allocate memory space for this order list. Okay, next one is add. So add corresponds to the push in the stack. Okay, so add will get the queue and item. Okay, it's very similar to push in stack. So sometimes with the queue, we call it push. So in this case, we have to check if the queue is full or not. If queue is full, then we have to we have to say there is an error. Okay. Otherwise, we can insert a new item to the stack at the rear. Okay. And the next operation is is delete. And in this case, the return type is item, and uh, there uh, the input parameter is just a queue. As you can see, uh, if it is implemented as a class, then there is no parameter, input parameter here. And if in this operation, we have to check if the queue is empty or not. If the queue is empty, then there is an error. Otherwise, we can remove one element from, from the front side. Okay. And then we return that element. Good. And the next one is, is a full. So the return type is boolean, and it's a simple, a simple operations. Okay, if Q is full, then return true, otherwise return false. And the last one is, is empty. So uh, it checks if the Q is empty. If it is, then we return true, otherwise return false. Okay. Okay, uh, in this slide, we'll talk about a problem of a sequential Q, okay? So in the definition, Q is an ordered list, okay? And then when we implement this ordered list, it's something like an array, okay? So array is one, one way to implement this ordered list. Okay, so let's assume that it is an array, okay? Then we will add something to this job. So in this table, we will add some jobs to the system. And if we finish the job, then it will be deleted. Okay, so if we have a new job, then the new job will be added to this queue. Okay, so in this example, the size of the maximum size of this queue is four. So from Q0 to Q3. And the front and rear are minus one so initially. Okay, then we add first job, job one, J1. Then rear, index rear increases. So now rear is zero. Front stays there. Front is still minus one, okay? And we add another job, job two, J2. And then J2 goes into Q1. Okay, so far so good. And we add another job. So rear is two and front is minus one. So we have J1, J2, J3. Okay, and then if we delete uh, the first job, job one, then we increase front by one so that the front is zero and rear is two. So we have we have nothing in Q0 and we have J2 in Q1, we have J3 in Q2 and we have nothing in J, uh, Q3. Okay, so far so good. So now we delete job two. Job two is done. Then front is one and rear is two. Okay, so far so good too. And then we add another job, job four, then job four will go into Q3. Okay, so far so good. And what if we add another job, like job five? Then we don't know where to put it, right? So if we increase rear, then we don't have Q4, so we cannot have job five. But look at this table. We have, we have empty Q0, Q1, right? But still, 
we cannot add the new job even though the queue some elements of this queue is empty so there is a, a quick remedy to these situations we can shift these jobs at every deletion okay so when we delete job one then we can shift job two and job three so you know uh, in the one two three four five in the fifth in the fifth line in the fifth row after deleting job one okay and q0 is empty right so instead of keeping this status then we shift job two and job three left so Q0 will have J2 and Q1 will have a J3 and Q2 and Q3 will be empty. Okay, so whenever we delete one job from this queue, then we shift. Okay, then we can add. Whenever we have any empty cell, then we can add new job. Okay, so whenever we have an empty cell, then the empty cell will be on the right side of this queue. So we can add. So that's simple. But this is time consuming. Think about this long queue. Like a queue is like queue has a thousand elements there. Then whenever we delete one element, then we have to shift nine, maybe on average, maybe 500 elements we have to shift. And uh, this one happens at the memory space. We have to shift all these elements in the memory space. And that is really expensive computationally expensive it means it takes a lot of time okay and you will you will learn how how uh, expensive this memory access is in the computer architecture class okay so if we have any access to the memory space then it is really expensive it takes it takes a lot of time compared to other kind of addition or multiplication kind of operations so Shift is one quick uh, solution, but it is terrible considering the, the time. Okay, and uh, another alternative uh, method is a circular queue. Circular queue is quite similar to sequential queue, okay, but there's one tiny little difference. Okay. Circular queue is a queue whose logical structure is circular. Okay, so the last element is followed by the first element. Okay, so if you take a look at this figure, you can see what it means. So right after the rear, then we will, this one is connected to the front. Okay, so this one is a circular. So basically, if we you know, think about these implementations with an array, okay, so if we implement this one, then you know this one the array is sequential right but to to use this array as a circular queue then we have to we have to manipulate our indexes to in we have two indexes rear and front okay so whenever we add new element to this to this uh, circular queue then we will increase rear okay and then we will apply the module operation with the max size. Okay, it means if the rear plus one is is bigger than or equal to max size, then it will be zero. Okay, again, if rear plus one becomes a max size, then after this module operations, it will be zero. So it goes back to the first element. Likewise, uh, when we delete one element, then the front will increase by one and we apply these module operations. So if the front plus one becomes a uh, max size, then after this module operations, it will be zero. So from the last element, it goes back to the first element of this array. So that logically it is a circular, even though this array is a sequential. Okay, when we have a circular queue, it is a little tricky to check if uh, the queue is empty or full, okay? So first, to check it is empty, then we will check if front is the same as rear, okay? And then to check if, if it is full, then we just check the rear plus one module max queue size is 
is the same as front okay so if we look at these two uh, statements they might be a little confusing but uh, with this figure then everything will be clear okay so let me explain how to check if the queue is empty or full okay so initially uh, the queue is uh, uh, empty so in this case and front is a zero and rear is a zero okay so it's a little different from the sequential queue so it starts from zero okay and in this figure it looks like it is actually circular the array is a circular but you know the array is is the sequential okay but logically it is a circular so this graph is is logical okay so from the empty queue then we add uh, three jobs from j1 to j3 okay j1 goes into index 1 and j2 index 2 j3 index 3 okay so we added three elements which means we increase we increase the rear by three so now rear is a three and front is a zero okay so far so good and now if we add two more jobs like j4 and j5 and then the rear will be five and the front is still zero okay now this is full okay so let's check this the second uh, statement rear plus one is six okay then modular by a six the max q size is six here so modular by six then there will be zero and the front is zero so it is full okay so logically based on this statement it is full okay but think about these situations carefully so we have one empty cell here so index zero is empty so is is it kind of waste okay think about that then if we have a job six here so in this index zero we have job six then the rear will be zero okay we increase one so rear will be zero and front is zero so in these situations actually this one is exactly the same as empty case so in the empty case we have nothing in the array and in in this case if we have job six here then we have six jobs but logically there is no difference we cannot tell any difference between these two situations you know when we have something in an array then do we can you tell if there is something there no is it you know if it is it is empty then might be we have some garbage there then how do we know uh, if it is a garbage or not so we cannot tell so if it is it is full of jobs then we cannot tell the difference between the empty and full so to make it safe so we need one empty cell so if we have only one empty cell it is full okay so if they point you know, front and rear are pointing at the same place then it is empty okay that's what these two statements say so let's go a little further so now we delete four elements job one to four okay then front increases by four so now front is four and rear is five but still it's okay we have only one job okay no problem and then we insert another job job six now we can add the job six because you know we have lots of empty cells okay then now front is four and rear is zero so you see this before inserting job six rear was five and from five we increase we increase the rear by one so now uh, rear is a six but we apply the modular operation with by six so it is a zero okay now we insert three more elements so job seven and eight and nine so now uh, front is four and rear is a three so now we have only one empty cell so now it is full again so check this statement rear is a three so three plus one is four four uh, modulo by uh, six is four which is the same as front so now it is full so whenever it whenever these two indexes are pointing the same uh, same uh, place then it is empty like empty okay and then uh, whenever the rear is f rear is following the front by one okay 
one cell away from a front then it is full so if we have only one empty cell it is it is full okay now uh, let's implement this queue with an array okay so first as we did in, with the stack okay so we follow the same kind of process so we will implement this queue uh, with a structure and then we will move on to a class okay so in this slide we will implement queue with the structure so we have a structure and the element element is a structure too and that was defined in the stack sections we we use the same element okay so in this structure we have element uh, pointer q and the max size and front and rear and remember uh, in the stack when we define our structure we had element and the max size and top only one index variable top but in this queue we have a front and rear Okay, when we create, okay, so we get the max Q size as a parameter, and then we we uh, allocate one memory space for this Q. Okay, Q is a structure, and uh, Q Q small Q is a Q pointer variable, and it is pointing a memory space for the one Q. Okay, and then. Uh, then we allocate memory space for this array okay so in it's a little hard to pronounce because we have the same q q and q but the small q means this pointer variable q and the q means you know this q okay i hope you are not that confused with this variable names okay so in the next line the the small q small q's variable q is is pointing the memory space for the array of this element okay so we allocate memory space for max q size times size of element so we have an array in in the memory space and the max size will be max q size and the front and rear will be initialized to zero okay then we return q okay so it looks like this in this figure s Q is pointing an array to store all the elements. Okay, and you know you might be uh, you might be curious about this Q pointer variable Q. Why do we need the Q? Okay, so why do we need this uh, pointer variable Q with the uh, MLO? So it's not just that we know the size of this the memory space already. It's it's one, right? But if we just use Q, okay, not the pointer variable, then that Q is local variable. So in this function, in this create Q function, if we if we create an instance of this Q structure, then that's it. When we create these functions, then it's gone. So we cannot return anything there. But in these functions, Q is a pointer and we allocate memory space which is from the hip and if we allocate memory space from hip then it's still there until we deallocate okay so q is a local the uh, point of variable q is a local variable which is pointing a memory space in the hip and at the end of this function we return q it means we return the address of this the memory space from the uh, the hip okay so that's why we use a, a Q pointer variable Q, not just one instance. Okay, so I hope it's clear to everybody. And the next operations, add Q and delete Q. These two uh, operations are kind of main uh, operations. Okay, so add Q will get the Q pointer and element item. So first thing is to to check if it is full or not if it is full then we will print out some error message and we will quit otherwise you know this one is add add operation so we will increase the rear okay so rear will be incre will increase by one and 
will apply the module operation. And after that, we add the item to this array. So this assignment is, is as I said a couple of times, assignment will copy all the elements of this structure instance. Okay, that's it. Okay, next, delete queue. Okay, in this case, we get just a queue, point variable queue. We don't need uh, element item. And return type is element, okay? And then first thing is to check if it is empty or not. If it is empty, then we will print out some error message and we'll queue it. Okay, so if it is not empty, then we increase front by one and we apply a module operation by the max size, okay? And then we return Q element where uh, Q front is pointing. So look at these figures, then you know what I mean by these implementations. Okay, uh, next functions are checking functions. So first is full queue. So uh, it checks if the queue is full or not, and it gets queue point of variable queue, and return type is boolean. And you know, in this if statement, we have some, some statement, which is exactly the same as the statement from the previous slide with the colorful image. So we check if the real plus one modulo by a max size is the same as front. If that's the case, then we return true. Otherwise, we return false. Next function is, is empty queue, which gets a, a one queue point variable queue, and the return type is boolean. And uh, uh, we have this uh, statement from the previous slide with the colorful image again. Okay, we just check if front is the same as rear. And if that's the case, then we return, we return true. Otherwise, we return false. That's it. Okay, as we did in the stack implementation, so now we will implement our queue uh, with class in C++. Okay, so data representation is like this. Okay, and then we have uh, uh, element. Okay, so we can use a, a structure too. So element can be a structure as defined in the stack sections. Okay, and we have a Q class. Okay, in the previous implementations for Q, that we had a structure Q, and now we have a class Q. And uh, likewise, we have in front and rear and the max size and element point Q, okay, as a private data members. Okay, now, you know, in the previous slide, we had a couple of functions, then all these functions will go into these public sections as a member function of this class. Okay, so in this slide, we have uh, one constructor and one destructor. Okay, in the constructor, we have to allocate memory space for this array. Okay, so we have a max size. Okay, and the max size is defined, but if you want, you can have a Q constructor with a parameter for max size. Okay, so it's up to you. And rear and front, they are initialized to zeros and max size will be max size. And the Q, Q is a pointer and then Q will point an array from the memory space. Okay, so element max size. Okay, and we have a destructor here and it will delete Q. So it is actually deallocating the memory space that we allocated from this constructor. And uh, you know, we have add and delete functions here. So uh, these functions are declared in the q.h file and uh, these functions are implemented in q.cpp file. If you really want, then you can implement this one in the q.h file, but usually since they are kind of a little longer, so usually we use the q.cpp file to implement these functions. 
Okay, so basically the inside of these functions are exactly the same as the structure-based implementations. So uh, let's check this header. So void queue colon colon add queue element item. So in this case, we don't have a queue point available as a parameter because we know which queue we are talking about, right? So add queue is a member of this queue class. So when once we once we make once we declare one instance, then we know, you know, when we call this add queue function, so then we know which queue that add function is talking about. Add function it belongs to, right? So inside of this function is exact same. So let me skip, and in the delete queue. So basically, again, the inside is exactly the same, and uh, outside we don't have, uh, you know, in, in in the in the header of these functions we don't have any parameter because, as I said, delete queue knows which queue he is talking about. Okay, likewise, so we have is full queue and is empty queue. Again, the inside is exact same. The logic is logic is exactly the same, but look at these variables. Instead of queue uh, arrow where we just have a where because where is a private data member. Okay, so in this case we don't have any parameter. Okay, so queue point variable queue is not there, and the where is its own private data member. So it's much simpler, right? But the logic is exactly the same, and likewise, is empty is is exactly the same as before, except that the Q point variable Q. And here is a a main function to check how this Q is working. Okay, so we have uh, uh, we have to include Q dot H. Okay, and then. In the main functions, we declare one Q point variable Q, and the uh, Q is is pointing a memory space for the seven elements for the Q. Okay, so by that, by new Q seven, actually we are we actually uh, declare one instance of this class, and uh, by passing the seven, we call a constructor with the seven. Okay, so in the in the constructor we allocate memory space for seven element. Okay, so now we have one queue. Now we can print the queue. Probably we will see some empty queue, and we add one, and we add another one. Okay, and then we print. Then we will see what's in there, and then we call delete queue and the delete queue so we delete twice and then we print something so with these uh, implementations you can see what's happening so you can add another element another element so if we element we if we element if we add some elements seven times okay then you will see some error message right then if we delete one more time here in this slide then you will see some error message because we don't have anything, it's empty, right? So with this code and the previous slides, so you have to practice. So you have to check a stack and queue, okay? Then you have to understand how they work. Okay, so in this slide, we have a variation of queue, which is a DQ or DQ. So basically the pronunciation is the same. It's a little confusing, but DQ, okay? So DQ means double-ended queue. So this one is actually a combination of a stack and queue. You know, in the stack, we can add and delete from one side, from only one side. And in the queue, we can delete from one side and we can add to another side. Okay, so in DQ, double-ended queue, we can add and delete from one side and we can add and delete from another side. So we can add and delete from both sides. So we need a left PTR and right PTR. Okay, so this might be a front and the rear. Okay, but which one is front and which one is rear, we don't know in this case because both sides are equally, you know, the same. They, they, they are the same. So 
we have uh, two pointers okay and then if we push from the left side then we move this left pointer and if we pop from the left side then we will move we will move left pointer okay if we push from the right side then we will move the right pointer and if we pop from the right side then we will move right pointer so on the left side it is it is a stack and on the right side it is a stack right so if you if you focus on the left side it is exact the same as a stack okay if you focus on the right side it is exact the same as a stack but if we use a push on the right side if you pop on the left side all the time then it is a Q right so it could be stack it could be Q but it is more general okay here is another variation of Q so it is a priority Q it is a, it is a similar to Q but it add it adds an element to the Q with an associated priority okay and when we delete we delete the element with the highest priority okay so think about the emergency room in a hospital okay so it's not it's not something like uh, first in first first comes first served okay so i have a little problem with my finger so i went to an uh, emergency room okay i'm first but right after me somebody had a heart attack then who should be who should be served first i have a little problem with my finger i, I have a, some issue but i can wait so in the emergency room they have different priority it's not a coffee house it's not just the first in first out first comes first served okay so the doctors will check who is more serious or who is more emergent okay then the most emergent person will be served first that's priority okay so when we implement this thing when we add new element to this queue then we put we put a priority or we put a score or if it is emergency room then we when we have a patient in the emergency room then we put the level of emergency okay so based on this level of emergency then the the most emergent person will be served first but if they have the same level of emergency and i have a problem with my finger and another person has a problem with this is tall then probably we have the same kind of you know, emergency levels then the first comes first served okay otherwise you know the priority is more important in this queue okay so we can implement this thing in a different way so when we add then we can add you know from the front or from the rear okay and then whenever we delete then we have to find who is the most important okay more who is who who has the, the highest priority but you know when we add if we put the priority and if we sort based on this priority that would be better okay but if you add one element with the priority but it's not sorted then whenever we delete then if we have to sort then maybe that there might be a way to implement that but i prefer the first options so when we add a new element then just sort based on this priority that would be better implementation i guess